is how we are getting the new year 2023 started here on Energy Frontiers. I am your host, Justina Okechuku. As always, we begin with headline energy news. Europe's natural gas prices, which jumped consistently last year after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, have now fallen well below their levels before the start of the war, as a relatively mild weather reduced demand and eased fears of a prolonged supply crunch, reflecting the continent's run for alternatives to Russian gas. Meanwhile, the United States has become the world's largest exporter of liquefied natural gas alongside Qatar last year with both countries supplying 81.2 million tons of LNG as a force major at the Freeport Export Terminal dropped the United States behind top exporter ex-Australia and causing a boom in global demand for the fuel. AIM listed United Oil and Gas PLC and its partner, Kuwait Energy Egypt, have announced the completion of the drilling operations on the ASW-1X exploration well onshore Egypt. United Oil also revealed that the well did not indicate the presence of hydrocarbons and will be plugged and abandoned before the rig drills the first well of the 2023 campaign. Nigeria's finance minister, Zainab Ahmed, says the country will stop the payment of fuel subsidy by the end of June 2023 and has set aside 3.36 trillion naira to cover the first six months of the year. The announcement is in line with the 18-month extension announced back in 2022. Angolan state oil company Sunangol has reaffirmed that it will keep its interest in Portugal's GAP Energy Corporation and lender Millennium BCP as it considers them strategic assets. Sunangol is Millennium BCP's second largest shareholder with a 19.49% stake after China's Fosun International, which controls 29.95% of the capital of Portugal's largest listed bank. The African Energy Chamber is planning to host a special New Year reception event at the World of Hilton Luxury Hotel in London on the 26th of this month where investors and African energy leaders will be encouraged to explore new avenues in financing energy projects and initiatives that will drive growth in the African continent. And that was a snapshot of your energy news headlines. When we return, we take an in-depth look at the Nigerian gas market for the past year, 2022. This is Energy Frontiers. Welcome back to the program. The Nigerian government has been asked to address issues that threaten the growth of the domestic liquefied natural gas markets and provide the right policy environment to make cooking gas accessible to its more than 200 million citizens. I had a quick chat with oil and gas policy expert and chief executive officer at Eco City Project, Nobet Shalsuk. He told me that despite the moderate growth seen in the LPG market over the years, the gas value chain has been plagued with wide-ranging issues that require urgent attention. Here's an excerpt of our conversation. Now, where is Nigeria at the moment in its agenda it, since its declaration of the decade of gas? Okay, well, um, the declaration was made about 2021. Right. And uh, government had prioritized uh, making Nigeria a major consumer of gas uh, while also driving uh, the objective of making uh, us also uh, a major exporter of gas. And so since then, we've seen a few projects uh, such as uh, Train 7 of NLNG, which has uh, passed FID. We've also seen the uh, launch of the Nigeria-Morocco gas pipeline projects. Uh, which government is trying to uh, firm up with uh, Morocco. Uh, also, following the enactment of the PIA, which is the Petroleum Industry Act, the government has issued the domestic base price, uh, which is meant to lay the foundation for uh, the gas market. And then also, uh, basically, they've articulated in terms of all of the stakeholders within the industry along the entire value chain and uh, aligned in terms of the timelines and objectives to achieve between now 2030. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, one of um, 
the key uh, contents of the report, they issued the roadmap for the decade of gas. And so the alignment of the stakeholders, which is very, very important, uh, is a major, major uh, driver of the next phase. Now, uh, Mr. Nobert, let's chat about policies and regulations in the gas sector mm. and how these are impacting investments and, and so on. Okay, thank you. So there are a few policies, that, there are quite a lot of policies, but I just want to focus on a few. Uh, in terms of regulation, of course, you know that the Petroleum Industry Act has uh, been enacted and it's about uh, being operationalized. Uh, and so that is a major, major uh, uh, regulatory uh, driver for the next phase of the Nigeria oil and gas industry. Uh, in terms of policies, of course, we have the Nigerian Gas Expansion Program that was launched about 2020. And so uh, that policy also uh, was meant to de-risk investment in the midstream and, and, and uh, downstream uh, sector. We have also the Nigerian Gas uh, Transportation Network Code, which is very, very good. Also, we'd be able to lay the framework for operationalization of the uh, gas grid. Uh, also, the Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization uh, Scheme which is meant to commercialize uh, uh, flare gas from various uh, gas fields in terms of associated gas production. And so um, these key policies, are most of them are, have not fully taken off, but uh, I expect it to have a positive impact on the uh, industry as it is. But another key takeaway is the fact that under the PIA, uh, there's an agency called the Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Gas Infrastructure Fund, which is established to uh, sort of provide uh, sort of a funding uh, to de-risk investment in the midstream of, uh, and downstream uh, segment of the sector. That, I think, is a major policy instrument they're about taking off, and I know that that would have a major, major impact on the industry. Now, speaking specifically to the LPG markets, uh, why are there so many issues around supply, demand, and, and the likes, and, and the metrics? Okay, so, you know, LPG, which in Nigeria we call cooking gas, impacts everyone, you know, from every Nigerian home, you know, to uh, Nigerian businesses, small-scale businesses, large-scale businesses, everybody uses LPG. And so uh, we have had a, a sustained period of uh, sort of... Um, escalation of LPG prices over the past 10 years, oh, sorry, over the past one year, um, the price of LPG has escalated over, you know, a hundred percent, uh, from about 5,000, we're now paying about 10,000 to 12,000 for the same, uh, amount of gas. And so that has led to the drop in the growth of the market. The market last year reached about 1.3 million tons per annum, and it's been growing steadily over the past five years by 20%, you know, year on year. And then right now, the market based on recent data released shows that at the end of this year, the market is about 800,000 tons, about 840,000, 850,000 tons. And so you can see the drop in growth, you know, from 1.3 and 800 is a direct impact of what is going on in the market. People are leaving uh, the LPG and going back to firewood, which has a major impact uh, uh, implication for the climate change and also in all of the fight that the government is trying to set up under the Climate uh, Act, uh, all of that basically would have a negative impact. And so this is uh, a worrying uh, development. Mm. Yeah. Now, is Nigeria making progress in the LPG sector? What do the numbers reveal? Okay, so as I just laid out to you, um, back in 2005, 2007, uh, when the domestic LPG scheme started, Nigeria's consumption of LPG was about 50,000 tons per annum for a population of 180 at the time, 160 million people. Uh, so fast forward uh, 2015, the market grew to about 350,000 tons. Then fast forward again to 2020, the market breached the 1 million ton per annum gap, uh, uh, level. And so moving on from 50,000 where it was, to 1 million tons, you know, uh, uh, 13 years later is a massive, massive development. And as I last year, as I said, 1.3 million tons was attained, which shows a major growth and sort of uh, uh, progress in uh, LPG. So penetration for LPG moved to about 25%. And I think that is, in terms of the numbers, very, very encouraging. But of course, now that the number is back down to 850, we should also be worried because we're going back to that era when uh, LPG was cast and also people were 
focus on their kerosene and, and firewood. You can watch the entire conversation on our YouTube page at Frontier Africa Reports. In other news, OPEC has called for nominations to be made for the fifth award for journalism, which will be presented at the eighth OPEC International Seminar in Vienna on the 5th to 6th of July 2023. The award was introduced to honor print and broadcast journalists and analysts, including those from OPEC member countries who have reported on and analyzed the petroleum industry for more than 10 years. More details on the OPEC website. And finally, in this package, following an agreement forged during the Namibian International Energy Conference in 2022, Namibia and Equatorial Guinea launched an initiative which saw four engineers receive training at the Equatorial Guinea Liquefied Natural Gas Facility and setting the tone for an ambitious local content drive that will position Namibia as a competitive hydrocarbon producer. According to the executive chairman of the African Energy Chamber, NJ Ayuk, the training signals a new era of intra africa energy collaboration and allows both countries to play local content at the center of their developmental strategies. And that's the package for you this week, and we thank you for watching. Remember to follow Energy Frontiers on Frontier Africa Reports' website and across all our social media handles as indicated on the screen. It's goodbye from me, Justina Okechukwu, and I'll see you next time.